Topic two, tax loss carrybacks. Before we dig in, let's look at some of the mechanics specific to tax loss carrybacks. It's really important to note that there's a difference between a tax loss and a tax benefit. A tax loss, that refers to the amount of taxable loss on the tax return of the company. The benefit that comes from that tax loss is the total present or future economic benefit that the company will receive in the form of a reduction in the tax payable. That is the tax loss times the applicable tax rate. When a tax loss carryback is used, the corporation will recover a tax paid from any one or combination of the previous three years. So in a sense, a tax loss carryback generates a tax refund. When looking at the mechanics, perhaps it's best to look at an example. JBC Corp is back and here are its taxable incomes and tax rates for the past few years. When looking at 2019, so right here at the bottom, let's take a look at how this tax loss could be carried back, how it would be applied uh, in order for the company uh, to utilize this should they choose to carry it back up to three years. They can't go any further back than 2016 because they're in 2019 and are limited to one, two, three years maximum for a tax loss carry back. So 2015 would be too long, so we're going to cut it off at 2016 to investigate further. We'll see here in 2016, we have a tax rate of 29%. 30% for 2017 and 28% for 2018. And also here, it shows that there was taxes paid um, from each of those years. So in theory, we could generate a tax loss carryback for each one of them. I'm gonna put the two slides side by side so you can see how we derived this total of 350 and a tax recovery of 101, almost $102,000. All right, so as you can see here, uh, even though there would have been more than sufficient losses for each of the four years in combination to permit uh, incomes in each of the four years in total to fully utilize the 375000 taxable loss for 2019, we can't use 2015, so we need to focus on 16, 17, and 18. The bigger the tax rate that was paid in the past, the more income tax was paid, which means the bigger the benefit that we could grab with our tax loss carry back. So we want to take a look. And if there was a constraint, meaning if 80 plus 155 plus 115 exceeded our tax loss for this year, then we might need to discuss strategy because we definitely want to get the most tax rate but we also don't want to leave any potential taxable income that, um, that we may be able to use for a future year's tax loss. Although, as a company, you also don't want to make a, his, uh, a habit out of continuous tax losses. So again, that's where the strategy comes into play because it's not... Um, it's not it's not easy. You need to definitely take a look at the business and understand the business before making these decisions. All right, so how do we get to 350,000 here? That's simply our 2016, 17, and 18 summed up. We take the taxes paid for each one of these. We apply our $375,000 tax loss. And that's how we gain our tax recovery or our tax refund utilizing these tax loss carrybacks. What does that mean for the 25,000? It means that the 25,000 can be carried forward. So what are your options here? Your options are to carry back or carry forward 
or, and you'll see this in CPA sometimes, a combination of both. And this is one of those instances where um, it would be a combination of both or a pure tax loss carry forward, um, but you can't utilize it all up with a tax loss carry back because you can't go beyond three years and back. What would that look like as far as a journal entry is concerned? Let's take a peek. So we are going to carry back that tax loss to each of the previous three years, use it all up, and we would gain a tax refund uh, of, so a tax benefit, a tax refund of 101,900. We would recognize the refund by debiting an income tax receivable on the balance sheet and then crediting the tax loss um, pardon me, the tax recovery from this year. So if we take a look at our previous slide, that was our taxable loss was 375,000. We carried back and applied 350,000, which generated a tax refund of 101,000. And that's all of these three items that we went back and were able to generate the refund. So I'm using the term uh, tax refund for a carry back, a refund or a receivable. And if this were, if everything, um, you know, in theory were the same, but we were using it as a carry forward, the terminology would be a tax benefit. Alrighty, so let's take a look at one more question. JBC has the following records. How much of the 2013 income tax paid will be recovered? Assuming JBC has a policy of applying loss carrybacks to the furthest year back first. So in 2015, that's our current year, there's a $17,000 tax loss and the company had been profitable for each of the years prior. So how much of the 2013 income tax paid will be recovered? Is it A? 2,640, B, 1,540, C, 4,340, or D, 17,000. If you said B, 1,540, you would be correct. And that's because the policy is to carry back the tax loss to the furthest year back. So 17,000 would first be carried back to 2012 to use up the 10,000, which means there's 7,000 left of a loss to be applied to 2013. 7,000 times by the tax rate of 22% is equal to 1,540. And the journal entry for this would be um, the total tax of income tax paid for here plus 1,540. However, that's not what the question asked. The question asked how much the 2013 income tax paid will be recovered. And that is our 7,000 times 22% for a total of 1,540. Alrighty, that's it for this video. I'll see you in the next.